कपन बुझे से गेट कपन नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार नमस्कार मॉर्निंग सर भला छन हम्म थैंक यू सर जिंदा आवाज एक बार बढ़िए दिन शुरू हो गया सर एक आवाज का कम आसे नाउ इट्स लाइक लाइव सो गुड मॉर्निंग लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स माय ग्रेट प्लेजर टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस टुडे नेशनल इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार ऑन कोविड-19 एंड इट्स प्रिवेंटिव मेजर्स सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ एनएचएस इंग्लिश मिर्जापुर कॉलेज ऑटोनोमस so uh, before uh, we go to our plenary session uh, i like to uh, inform you all that uh, today uh, we had with us we have as a social persons and uh, we have the special presence uh, said sarita ma'am will be live uh, uh, right now uh, we have got the positive response from her so uh, 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 as resource persons uh, we have with us dr devdulla banerji associate professor and head department of botany and forestry vidyasagar uh, university dr prashun priya nayak associate professor aims jodhpur dr deepak vagava professor of microbiology national medical college nepal dr mohan choudhury department of community medicine minnapur medical college dr uniban mohanpatro assistant director and publisher american chemical society uk dr indoren shal minnapur medical college minnapur dr olok kamal shil professor of microbiology university of calcutta dr devjani mitro uh, assistant professor of economics vijay krishna girls college howrah mr agnibil das youth officer uh, regional director of nss kolkata Dr. Pratik Tarabda, medical practitioner, Minapu. Uh, today uh, with us we have uh, uh, NSS program coordinator with the University, Dr. Tapan Kumar De. Sir, I welcome you on behalf of government, on behalf of NSS, to this international webinar on COVID-19 and its preventive measures. So uh, before we move on to uh, uh, the next uh, uh, program of our schedule. of our webinar so we have to uh, uh, know what is pandemic and epidemic so we uh, always get confused what is pandemic what is epidemic so a pandemic uh, i think it's a it has a passport a pandemic is an epidemic ec uh, epidemic that travels a pandemic is an epidemic that spreads over multiple countries or con continents but on the other hand an epidemic is a disease that affects a large number of people within a community population or region again there is another term that is endemic which is something that belongs to a particular people or country so before this uh, novel coronavirus we have witnessed the emergence of a previously unknown pathogen which has escalated into an unprecedented outbreak and which has been led by an unprecedented response the black death uh, we can remember all well that the black death uh, which emerged in 14th century which was the most fatal pandemic in human history and 90% of the total population of england was eliminated by this deadly disease and the king of english uh, quarantined himself for more than a, more than a year so epidemics are inevitably uh, inevitable reality and have ravaged us more than years ravaging mankind from prehistoric to the present covid 19 has devastated present system of all spheres starting from our personal life to our academic life but not the system only it has also challenged our existing values they are reverted they are altered the ideals of indian culture is at stake the perception of hepatics is communication it is a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus so before novel coronavirus we have we, we have uh, we know about ebola outbreak which uh, uh, killed uh, more than 2000 people in less time and following that ebola outbreak we saw the forming of uh, who rnd blueprint a global strategy for developing drugs and vaccines before 
epidemics and accelerating research and development activities during epidemics. It speaks of the ability of the medicines and technologies that save lives. But the COVID-19 pandemic has proven to be more than just a threat to our health. It has become a disruption of our way of life, affecting everything from supply chains to the way we love to what is considered essential work. Actually, it is hard to believe that just four months ago, this virus was unknown to all of us. But in these few days, in these few months, we have already learned so much about it. We know its DNA. We know it can be transmitted from person to person. We know that a lot of things. So we know that most of people who are having the uh, weaker health system, the underlying health condition, they are uh, the older people, they are the most uh, 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 prominent persons to be attacked by this uh, novel coronavirus. Our greatest concern is the potential for the virus to spread to countries with weaker health system and which are ill prepared to deal with. We have seen that this with this rapid development of an Ebola vaccine, the uh, medicines, uh, the medical companies, they prospered to a higher degrees but having the genetic sequence of the virus has enabled the rapid development of this. But vaccines and therapeutics are not silver bullets. They will take time to develop. We have to keep patience. In the meantime, there are simple things everyone can do. Wash your hands regularly, cover your nose and use your mouth with, with your elbow. That the guidelines prepared by who, when you cough to or sneeze. That's the personal hygiene. This outbreak could still go on in any direction. We don't know the direction. So to put it bluntly, I can say that we are shadow boxing. We need to bring this virus into the light so that we can prevent ourselves, we can attack it properly. Again, some there are some people who are st stigmatizing. Well, that so, so, but I think stigmatizing individuals or entire nation does nothing but harm the response instead of directing all our energy against the outbreak stigma, stigma diverts our attention and turns people against each other so we have to uh, keep our hands together and the only way we will defeat this outbreak is for all countries to work together in a spirit of solidarity and cooperation there are rumors against this virus but i can say i request everyone that this is the time for facts, not fear. This is the time for science, not rumors. I will say it again that this is the time for solidarity, not stigma. So I heartily, I heartily welcome you all once again. Uh, uh, and good morning to all of you, all the participants, academicians, researchers, students. So now uh, we move on to uh, uh, our welcome uh, song that is to be sung by our student of English department, uh, Shomojit Das. Hello, so sir. Am I audible? You can start. Yeah. Sir, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay, sir. Yes, yes. Dhonilo vau bhano mudhuro gumbhiro prabhato ambaro maje dikhe di gantare bhuvano mundire shanti shungi to baje dhonilo re dhonilo re Herugo on Tari, Arupo Shundari, Nikilo Shang 
সংসারে পরম বন্ধুরে হ্যারোগ অন্তরে অরূপ সুন্দরে লিখিল সংসারে পরম বন্ধুরে এসো আনন্দিত মিলন অঙ্গনে সুগুণ মঙ্গল সাজে ধনিল রে ধনিল রে সকাল মাস বিরোধ বিদেশ কৌকনির মল কৌকনিশেষ চিত্তে হোক যত বিঘ্ন গত নিত কল্যাণকাজে শরতরঙ্গিয়া গাও বিহঙ্গম পূর্ব পশ্চিম বন্ধু সঙ্গম মৈত্রী বন্ধন পূর্ণ মন্ত্র পবিত্র বিশ্ব সমাজে ধনিল রে ধনিল রে ধনিল আও ভানু মধুর গম্ভীর প্রভাত অম্বর মা দিকে দিগন্তরে ভুবন মন্দিরে শান্তি সঙ্গীত বাজে ধনিল রে ধনিল রে থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার ফর গিভিং মি দিস অপরচুনিটি So, uh, uh, with, uh, with us right now, we have uh, Dr. Ramaphosad Bhattacharya. Good morning to everybody. Uh, one minute, sir, and welcome you. Sir, should I leave? Sir, should I leave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, uh, I, now I request our uh, principal, sir, respected Dr. Gopal Chandra Vera, to deliver the welcome address. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Honorable keynote speaker, Dr. Ramakrasar Pattakarjo, State NSS Officer, Sosata, and Joint DPI Government of West Bengal. This is Sorita Patel, Regional Director of NSS, Dr. Kapoor Kumar Dev, Program Coordinator of NSS, Vidyas University, Dr. Deepak Bhagavad, Professor, Department of Microbiology, National Medical College, Nepal, Dr. Kusum Kiyo Nair, Professor of India Institute of Medical Science, Gopu, and so many other delegates like anyone in the same from Minyapur Hospital and other delegates. And our research persons present here, I welcome all of you in this two-day lesson seminar. This is Lord Narada. I also welcome. I also welcome. All the teachers present here, all the, the, teachers present here, the participants, the participants, my colleagues, my colleagues, and my dear students. students. Minabur College, since its inception in the year 1873, has been inclined on imparting education in right earnest in 22 honors and 14 PG subjects apart from diverse diploma and certificate courses and has become a premier higher education hub not only in the state of West Bengal but also in the country. As a mark of its academic excellence, the college has been conferred with autonomous status by UGC in 2014 and in spring. The special education status in 2014 is also a vindication to its fairness and vulnerable academic strength. The college has been reactivated by me in our person in 2017 and has been claiming a class as 8.6 0 CGPA, which is a commendable achievement of our institution. 
seminars, workshops, and special lectures. Uh, uh, regular features of the college was that of hours, which used to be international webinar as a testimonial. I will extend my sincere thanks to honorable student speaker and other erudite resource person for accepting our invitation to join this international webinar of the college in a rural town against their busy series. I hope our participants will be highly benefited by the enterprising and lucid analysis by our distinguished resource persons on their concerned topics the true spirit of the class theory of the arena and also by their achievement into their respective fields. Coronavirus disease is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. Most people who fall sick with COVID-19 will experience mild to moderate symptoms and recover without special treatment. This virus that causes COVID-19 is mainly transmitted so droplets generated when an infected person coughs, sneezes, and exhales. These droplets are too heavy to hang in the air and quickly fall on floors of surfaces. You can be infected by breathing in the virus if you are within close proximity of someone who has COVID-19 or by touching a contaminated surface and then your eyes, nose, and mouth. The pandemic is a threat for every country, rich and poor. The solution is aggressive preparedness. Ultimately, how deadly this virus will be depends not only on the virus itself, but on how we respond to it. I request you all to play a vital role in response to the COVID-19 to fight against rumors and misinformation is a vital part of the battle against this virus. Here is still a lot we do not know, but every day we are learning more and we are working around the clock to fill the gaps in our knowledge. We are to make sure people have accurate information about the threat they face and how to protect themselves and others. As at the very least, we can slow it down and buy time. This is not a dreary. This is not the time to give up. This is not a time to excuse us. This is a time to cover pulling out all the stops. This is not just a threat for individual people or individual countries. We are all in this together and we can only save lives together. That's why we keep talking about solidarity. I hope. The deliberations which will be made in two consecutive days will be of great worth for all the participants and these academic discussions will be a bonus to further research activities in this field. Before I recoil, I would once again like to thank all associated with this academic exercise for taking pains to contribute their valuable deliberations and active participation. I, on behalf of Minnesota College, in general, and MSS units in particular, and you all for making this webinar a success. I also like to give a special thank my program officers of MSS units. With these few words, I'd like to offer officially inaugurate this occasion before I end up. I would also cherish that this intellectual exercise will be the harvest for which it was really introduced. I intend to thank you all once again, Namaskar. Uh, thank you, sir, for your kind words. Uh, now I request uh, uh, Dr. Tapan Kumar De, Program Coordinator, NSS Bidasagar University, uh, to say a few words uh, about this seminar and COVID. অধ্যক্ষ গোপাল বাবু আমি খুবই আনন্দিত যে আজকে আমি পেয়েছি আমাদের এসএনও সাহেবকে আমাদের সব বাবুকে হ্যাঁ খুবই আনন্দিত আজকের এই প্রোগ্রামে তিনি এসেছেন সরিতা ম্যাডামও আসবেন বলে শুনেছি নিশ্চয়ই খুব ভালো হবে প্রোগ্রামটা আমি দুই একটা কথা বলবো বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের এনএসএস এর 
এই কোভিড পিরিয়ডে যে দক্ষতার সঙ্গে কাজ করছে মেদিনীপুর কলেজ মেদিনীপুর কলেজ আচ্ছা ইকো হচ্ছে কেন একটু বলবেন আমাদের যে কলেজ গুলো রয়েছে তার মধ্যে মেদিনীপুর কলেজ অন্যতম তারা সব ব্যাপারে সব কাজেই এগিয়ে আছেন এই ব্যাপারেও তারা পিছিয়ে নেই তারা একটি অসাধারণ প্রোগ্রাম অর্গানাইজ করছেন তাই আমি বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের পক্ষ থেকে ওনাদের ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি অনেক কলেজই এই ধরনের প্রোগ্রাম করছে মূলত বিষয়টা মনে রাখতে হবে তিনটি স্তরে আমাদের ভাবতে হবে প্রথম স্তরে এই কোভিড নাইনটিন এর প্রকৃতি কি এই ভাইরাসের ধরন ধরন কেমন কিভাবে এটা স্প্রেড করে কতদিন পরে এটা মানুষের শরীরে দেখা দেয় তার ক্রিয়াটা এই বিষয়টা প্রাইমারি জিনিসটা জানতে হবে দ্বিতীয়ত আমাদের নিজেরা কি নিজেদেরকে কিভাবে সুস্থ রাখব কিভাবে অন্যান্যদের সুস্থ রাখব সেই বিষয়ে একটা কনসাসনেস বিল্ড করতে হবে একটা চেতনা গড়ে তুলতে হবে আর তৃতীয় বিষয়টা হচ্ছে হ্যালো এই পোস্ট কোভিড পিরিয়ড যখন আমরা দেখব যে পোস্ট কোভিড পিরিয়ডে সব কিছু খুলে যাচ্ছে স্কুল কলেজ কিন্তু আমাদের সামাজিক আচরণগত যে পরিবর্তনের সঙ্গে খাপ খাইয়ে নিতে হবে মানুষ সামাজিক কিন্তু বাধ্য হয়ে তাদের এখন সোশ্যাল ডিস্টেন্স মেনটেন করতে হবে এই যে সিচুয়েশনটা আসছে এই সোশ্যাল ডিস্টেন্স মেনটেন করে সামাজিকতা বজায় রেখে মানুষের সঙ্গে এক হয়ে কাজ করা আর অন্যান্য সমস্যার সঙ্গে লড়াই করা এই কোভিড নাইনটিনই তো আমাদের একটা সমস্যা নয় আরো অনেক সমস্যা আছে এবং আমরা সব সময় বলি যে আমরা সেই সমস্যায় কাঁধে কাঁধ মিলিয়ে লড়াই করব সেই সমস্যার সঙ্গে আমরা ফাইট করে মানুষ মানব জাতিকে রক্ষা করব জয়ী হবে সুতরাং এইখানেও একটা বিষয় রয়ে যাচ্ছে যে কিভাবে আমরা পোস্ট কোভিড নাইনটিন যে পিরিয়ড আসছে সেইখানে কিভাবে নিজেদের খাপ খাইয়ে নিয়ে নিজেদের কাজকর্মের স্বাভাবিকতা বজায় রাখতে পারবে এই ভাবনাটাও আমাদের ভাববার সময় এসেছে আর একটা কথা আমি বলবো মেদিনীপুর কলেজ যেভাবে এই প্রোগ্রামটি আয়োজন করেছে যে সমস্ত এক্সপার্টদের তারা এখানে ইনভলভ করতে পেরেছেন সেই সমস্ত এক্সপার্টরা তাদের এক্সপার্টাইজ দিয়ে উপকৃত করবেন আমাদের ভলেন্টিয়ারদের যারা এই প্রোগ্রামের সঙ্গে যুক্ত এবং আমি আশা করছি যে এই প্রোগ্রামটি অত্যন্ত একটি ফ্রুটফুল প্রোগ্রাম হবে এন এস এসের ক্ষেত্রে বিদ্যাসাগর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের এন এস এসের ক্ষেত্রে মেদিনীপুর কলেজের ক্ষেত্রে একটা মাইলস্টোন হয়ে দাঁড়াবে অন্যান্য কলেজগুলো এই ধরনের প্রোগ্রাম অর্গানাইজ করার জন্য মেদিনীপুর কলেজকে অনুসরণ করবে এই আশা রেখে এই কয়েকটি কথা বলে আমি আমার বক্তব্য শেষ করছি আমাকে একটা মিটিংয়ে আবার চলে যেতে হবে এগারোটার সময় আপনারা আমাকে ক্ষমা করবেন আমি বেরিয়ে যাচ্ছি ভালো থাকবেন গুড বাই থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার নাও I request uh, Dr. Ramaprasad Bhattacharya, State NSS Officer and Joint DPR, Government of West Bengal. Uh, sir, uh, our keynote uh, speaker of today's webinar. Now I request Sir, sir to, uh, to, uh, to deliver Hello. his address. His address. Hello. 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 Am I audible? Mm. মাইসেলফ ওকে 
I want to express thanks and gratitude to the college authority for inviting me and to join with this uh, national or international webinar, okay, which is organized by Medinipur College Autonomous today. We know very well about the major consequences of the disease COVID-19. Already World Health Organization has already declared this disease as a pandemic disease. More than 180 countries are affected with this kind of disease. So in our country also, you know about the mortality rate. So nowadays, not only the NSS volunteers of the state, they are engaged with this program. Today, those researchers, scientists, professors who are participating in this program, I would like to request all of them to make social awareness so that we can combat this disease from our country. Particularly, you can see the mortality rate in the USA, Italy, and other developed countries in Europe. So they become, I think, they become failure to combat this disease. In our country, it is not so alarming, but I do not know how long it will be possible. So I would like to request not only the NSS volunteers, because NSS volunteers are directly engaged with different types of the awareness program and other kinds of program also to combat this disease in our state, okay, starting from North Bengal University to Vidyasagar University. Particularly the activities of the Vidyasagar University and the Medinipur College Autonomous is highly praiseworthy. So, and particularly, I would like to request all of them just to keep the social distancing, to wear the mask and to use the sanitizer and other type of preventive measures which are essential okay, for combating this disease because you know the, it is the duty of the educated persons to educate the illiterate persons because most of the people of our state they do not know about the mode of transmission of this disease because it is newly discovered new disease and it is a viral disease and RNA disease we do not know also that when we will get the vaccine of this such kind of disease we do not know because most of the researchers and as well as the scientists they are engaged to discover the vaccines of this disease because we do not know the nature of the glycoprotein we do not know about the nature of the spike Okay, what type of disease, what type of uh, proteins are essential? Uh, that means to uh, just to discover uh, the vaccine. So nowadays it is very difficult. So scientists are engaged to discover certain, such kind of vaccines also throughout the country and throughout the world also. So I would like to request all of you, please do not create any panic. Be safe. Please try to educate the illiterate persons at least to know about the mode of transmission of the disease so that at least we will be safe, our society will be safe and our country will be safe. So I would like to express thanks and gratitude to the college authority, Dr. Gopal Chandra Bair, Medinipur College Autonomous and other resource persons who will deliver their speech today and from their deliberation, I think that today's participants will be enlightened and they will know much more about the disease, I think that this program will give, uh, get a great success today. So thanks to everyone, thanks to the college authority, and thanks to you, uh, thanks to the program officers of the Medieval College NSS. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to connect uh, Sorita ma'am, uh, trying to reach her, but somehow I could not connect. Uh, so uh, uh, here we will uh, end uh, this inaugural session. Uh, next we will move on to our uh, plenary session. Uh, the, our first speaker is Dr. Devdulal Benarji uh, from uh, Bindasagar University. He is an associate professor and head department of Botany and Forestry, Bindasagar University. Uh, he will join us soon. Our second speaker is Dr. Poshun Priyo Nayok, Associate Professor, Ames, Jodhpur, 
Third speaker is Deepak Vargabo, a professor of microbiology, National Medical College, Nepal. And fourth speaker of uh, uh, today's session, uh, Dr. Mohua Choudhury, Department of Community Medicine, Mizapur Medical College. Hello. Hello. Hello, Tanmay. Yes. So our uh, first speaker Am I audible? Yes. Okay. So uh, hmm. uh, 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 the first speaker of today's session is uh, Dr. Debdulal Banerjee. Uh, he is currently uh, teaching at Bidashago University in the Department of Botany and Forestry, Bidashago University. Uh, Dr. Uh, Debdulan Banerjee, uh, Associate Professor, Department of Botany and Forestry, uh, Bidhisattva University, he has just joined us. Sir, uh, welcome you uh, to this international webinar on COVID-19 and its preventive measure that the NSC units of Minapur College is organizing. Answer, answer, answer. Facebook link time, but he check too. Facebook, YouTube, do it, but I check, answer. <clears throat> Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, so, on behalf of NSS Youth Minapur College, I welcome you to this international webinar on COVID-19 and its preventive measure. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, I have I have introduced you uh, to our participants. Uh, uh, we can uh, start uh, the session now. Okay. okay. And uh, so before we start, uh, as we announced, as we uh, declared that we will take questions from the participants, uh, uh, that will be filtered. So they were asked to uh, put their questions in the comment box of, uh, box of, box of Facebook Live. So we will take uh, uh, questions from there. So they are requested to uh, 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 listen to your uh, deliver, deliberation. And if they have any question, they can uh, put that question on the comment box of Facebook Live. Okay, so uh, good morning to all the participants and the organizers. Uh, today I am about to discuss a topic uh, that is uh, <coughs> coronavirus, past, present, and its future. Uh, why uh, we are discussing why this webinar uh, today? Because we, uh, the people around the world, we are suffering from a a particular disease and you all know that the disease is nothing but COVID-19 uh, actually it creates a, a unique kind of problem uh, among us uh, actually uh, we are uh, not <coughs> able to interact with each other uh, Sir, uh, in a different way because uh, the conventional yes. seminars uh, 
the conventional discussion that generally happens uh, when we sit together. But here we are discussing this uh, particular topic uh, from away. So anyway, I am interested to uh, deliver something on uh, the coronavirus because all of us, uh, we have uh, uh, an idea that what the coronavirus is and how it is affecting uh, the pupils around the globe. Uh, so uh, what are the relationship among uh, this coronavirus and this COVID-19? Actually, this COVID-19, uh, the name came from the coronavirus, uh, which originated in 2019. Uh, and this virus, it is uh, not uh, a newer one. Uh, coronavirus was there uh, for several uh, decades. And uh, what we have found that in most of the cases, uh, the coronavirus, they affects uh, the other animals. But, uh, and in case of human beings also, they uh, did some uh, mild uh, symptoms and during winter season, uh, during the beginning, uh, sometimes we suffer from a mild cold and that is because of this coronavirus. But uh, nowadays, uh, in the last three, four months, uh, we have uh, got a specific strain of that virus uh, that is actually uh, hampering our uh, normal life. So first of all, uh, I want to say something about the viruses. Uh, by definition, this is an infective agent that typically consists of nucleic acid molecule in a protein coat and uh, is too small to be seen by light microscopy and is able to multiply only within the living tissues or uh, the host cells. Another term you all know that is epidemic. What is epidemic? a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease in a community at a particular time that is epidemic. But uh, nowadays we are uh, hearing this particular terminology that is pandemic. The disease prevalent over a whole country or the world is called as pandemic. COVID-19, it is a pandemic one because it has actually affected almost all the countries of the world and all uh, uh, the territories, all uh, the parts of the globe uh, with uh, its effect. Uh, coronavirus, it is a well-known pathogenic organism, you all know. Uh, it causes uh, disease in human and other animals. It causes a broad spectrum, respiratory, gastrointestinal, neurological, and uh, systemic diseases. Uh, this uh, virus, it belongs to the family Corinifiridae and it has uh, four different genera uh, that is alpha coronavirus, beta coronavirus, gamma and delta coronavirus. Uh, it was actually uh, uh, discovered for the first time in 1930s that uh, causes mild respiratory infection in uh, domesticated chicken. Uh, and then it gained it, uh, its importance after 2003 only when we have found a disease that is called the SARS, severe acute uh, respiratory uh, virus that causes a major uh, global epidemic wiping out of thousands of global population. Uh, less than a thousand people uh, died during that time. And before 2003, uh, there were some epidemics, small epidemics, which were linked to the uh, history of humankind that actually causes mild respiratory infections. Uh, so uh, it was for the first time when coronavirus was seen as the uh, serious threat. Uh, it was actually 2003 when some game changing event uh, leads to uh, uh, different types of research on the, this particular uh, virus. And uh, as reported that uh, SARS was actually known to be caused by cross species transmission from uh, bats to human beings. Uh, the term Corona, uh, actually term was found in uh, 68, you know, Corona 
that is uh, uh, Latin uh, words uh, from crown, uh, because you have uh, seen that uh, some club separate uh, glycoproteins or some spike like uh, proteins, uh, they actually protruding out from uh, its uh, surface. Uh, it is under the family Coronaviridae. It has several subfamilies uh, that is Orthocoronaviridae. And uh, I have already told you that there are uh, four different uh, uh, genera, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta species. Uh, but uh, of these, the first two one, that is alpha coronavirus and beta coronavirus, they actually affect human beings. And in case of alpha, there are two strains, that is, uh, HCOV 229E and HCOV NL63. And in case of beta, uh, there are uh, five different strains. So all these seven strains, they actually affecting human beings. And uh, if we consider their uh, evolution of this virus, actually uh, you can found in this table that uh, they have originated from this natural host, mostly from the bats and in two cases from rodents so through bats uh, then the intermediate host is uh, either cattle or camels and then final, finally they have entered into uh, human beings uh, you know uh, the two incidences uh, one is uh, that SARS-CoV-2002 uh, uh, when uh, actually, it was transmitted initially from Himalayan palm civet uh, to uh, human beings. And uh, in other cases also, you can found that is uh, Chinese ferret badgers or raccoon dogs from their back to those things to human beings they have entered. And the recent one that is 2019, uh, that emerged in Wuhan city of Hubei uh, province of mainland China that initially started with mild respiratory disease, but fatal consequences uh, was found with elder and people with comorbidities. That outbreak associated with uh, actually wet market, what people saying that it was actually originated from a wet market and where uh, about 120 different live animal species uh, were actually found. So from which yeah, this virus uh, originated, it was uh, not confirmed from there. Uh, it initially named as 2019 NCOV, but later on it was named as uh, SARS-CoV-2, or we, uh, we are naming it uh, popularly as COVID-19. And these uh, coronaviruses, uh, I have already told you there are the different strains of coronaviruses. They undergone a variety of mutations uh, and lapping into human causing infection both mild and severe. And after SARS, that 2002-03 uh, incidents, four more strains of coronavirus have been recognized till now of which two strain that is H of HKU1 and NL63, they causes mild respiratory disease and other two strains that is MERS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2, which actually causes epidemics. All these seven strains of coronaviruses, they recognized in humans are known to jump to humans from animals and toxic the species barrier. Uh, their uh, progenitor virus uh, of the recognized strains are also seen in different host animals. Uh, actually, uh, this uh, H of NL63, H of 220E, and MARSCOV and SARSCOV, all these have originated from bats while uh, HCOV, HK1, and HCOV OC43, these are most likely to be originated from uh, rodents. And uh, you all know that domesticated animals, they play a major role in, uh, as intermediate host. 
they actually enable transmission of these viruses from their natural host to human beings. These are the different strains. I'm not discussing in detail, but you can see that both alpha, beta, and the papa viruses, they have uh, different types of uh, strains. And regarding this COVID-19, uh, the most recent discovered coronavirus, this one, and this new virus and the disease of un that is actually unknown before this outbreak uh, began uh, during December 2019. It actually causes a pneumonia, and initially in one province, what people uh, uh, they found that a pneumonia of unknown kind. Uh, they actually uh, started reporting, and their country office uh, of um, who in China in 31st December 2019, they told that we are getting uh, a unique type of uh, pneumonia, and the outbreak was actually uh, declared as public health emergency uh, of international concern only after 30th January uh, this year. So uh, there were uh, actually a few days gap uh, which actually helps the spread of uh, these uh, virus uh, throughout the world. Uh, this virus is uh, genotic in nature uh, because uh, the genome sequence for this novel coronavirus, it has close resembles with their uh, other kind of viruses, other beta coronaviruses uh, like SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV. Uh, actually, uh, the coronavirus study group of uh, International Committee on Taxonomy of Virus, that is ICTV, they have given its scientific name as SARS-CoV-2, but we are uh, popularly calling is that uh, as uh, COVID-19. Uh, actually, uh, this is the uh, comparison among uh, three incidences uh, that was in uh, one in Jira, that is Saudi Arabia, another is uh, Sandy, China, and the latest one, Wuhan. The SARS CoV, MERS CoV, and SARS CoV 2. Uh, what you can find that the outbreak actually for MERS CoV, the outbreak was initiated in 2012. Later on in 15 and 18, uh, again it uh, uh, it shows its effects. SARS-CoV incidence was from 2002 to 2004, and the latest one, SARS-CoV-2, uh, what you have uh, found it uh, during uh, last year, December, and it is continuing. We don't know uh, whether uh, it will continue for another year or not. Uh, actually, in June 2002, that mars cov but the average age of the people uh, to whom it infects was found 56 years and in case of uh, sars cov that uh, which was actually uh, identified during november 2002 its average age was 44 and in case of sars cov 2 we are getting an average uh, age is uh, that is 56 years and in all the cases, fever is the common symptom, also dry cough, but in case of SARS-CoV-2, uh, actually dry cough symptom is uh, uh, found in much more uh, percentage than, and uh, percentage of persons who requires ventilators in case of SARS-CoV-2 is less than that of March or uh, SARS CoV 2002, but as much more number of pupils are uh, affected by uh, this SARS CoV 2 or uh, the latest incidents, therefore, actually, the crisis of ventilators and all those, uh, these things actually happening. I uh, uh, know that coronavirus is a RNA virus. And it's a single standard positive sense RNA virus uh, having enveloped. So it is enveloped uh, virus and it has the helical symmetry, therefore, helical uh, enveloped single standard positive sense RNA virus.
So among all RNA viruses, you can find its position here uh, under uh, coronaviridae group. Uh, this is the structure of that some uh, spike-like uh, uh, proteins are there. Uh, they are actually in the uh, lipid layer. Uh, this is the lipid layer, and th this is actually their uh, capsid structure. And within this capsid structure, their uh, RNA molecule, that uh, single-stranded RNA molecule, is uh, there. Uh, uh, you can observe that uh, under electron microscopy, uh, the corona like structure, in case of uh, 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 solar structure, what you have found that around that uh, sun, you found a corona like structure as it resembles that uh, corona like structure. So it is a uh, corona virus. And around uh, this uh, actually uh, envelope, you can find all these uh, membrane bound proteins these are uh, actually uh, club separate projections uh, these club separate projections actually they uh, they forms that uh, corona structure this is its uh, three dimensional structure what you are nowadays getting from internet where you can found that it has uh, some uh, sp uh, spike glycoproteins in, in proteins it's hemoglobin in a storage dimer all these are within its envelope structures this is the envelope it is nothing but uh, the lipid layer and rna which nucleoproteins are there in its uh, center uh, they generally uh, uh, infects our uh, upper respiratory tract and sometimes uh, the gastrointestinal tracts uh, and they cause uh, cold symptoms uh, primarily in winter and early uh, spring seasons. So uh, coronavirus and its effects uh, are uh, uh, actually uh, we suffer from uh, its effects uh, for several years. Uh, This is the uh, replicate. What we found that some people they are uh, most uh, or more su susceptible than the other people because uh, this coronavirus actually it uh, binds with the uh, cell surface proteins uh, with their uh, uh, with their uh, S proteins. Actually, they bind with the cell surface molecules uh, like uh, some metalloproteases. Uh, that is amino peptides, like uh, those things. And uh, st uh, till date, it is not clear that uh, whether it is by fusion of the viral and cell membrane or by uh, receptor mediated endocytosis. But anyway, they whenever they enter into the cells, as they have a uh, single standard. Uh, single positive stranded RNA genome, they directly uh, starts to produce their proteins and also the genomes in the cytoplasm. And subsequently, they starts uh, to produce uh, uh, from these positive strands to uh, their negative strands. And that negative strand uh, they use as the template. <coughs> Uh, uh, they produce a lot of uh, virion uh, structures within the cells. Uh, these are actually the genomic structure of earlier uh, reported SARS, uh, that SARS-CoV, and another one, MARS, the MARS-CoV. Uh, I am not uh, going into its detail because uh, there are several other lectures to them tomorrow. I think uh, during uh, those discussions, uh, this will come. And this is the latest one. Uh, this is uh, our, uh, which was collected from Wuhan. Uh, this sample, it shows that uh, the genetic structure, it is quite similar with the earlier, uh, uh, already uh, I have shown you 
the SARS-CoV uh, that uh, all, have, uh, uh, all similarities, but some uniquenesses are also there in for uh, this one two uh, virus, uh, Wuhan H U uh, one virus. And uh, if we go through its uh, phylogenetic network, about 160 different SARS-CoV-2 genome uh, were till date uh, actually they did work on all those things, 160 different SARS-CoV-2 genome. And uh, if you uh, found uh, one point here, uh, that is the uh, that is the coronavirus, which uh, is actually acted from uh, mass sample. Uh, actually, uh, you can found uh, the relationship with this batch originated uh, coronavirus with all other coronaviruses, uh, all other 160 samples and. But all these samples here, like China, East Asia, USA, Canada, Europe, Australia, Mexico, and Brazil. So uh, they have uh, some kind of similarity as well as uh, dissimilarity uh, also. And uh, this uh, SARS-CoV-2, it has coronavirus. Uh, this uh, bat coronavirus, it has about 96% similarity. Uh, but in case of uh, the pangolin coronavirus, uh, actually uh, it has 92% similarity only. So uh, actually there are different types of uh, uh, contradictory uh, uh, evidences they are coming out. Some people saying uh, that uh, they have originated from uh, bats, some people saying they have originated from pangolins, and some people saying, no, this is actually, uh, this virus is actually biotechnologically um, uh, But uh, actually, different strains, they have certain similarity and dissimilarities. Uh, symptom of uh, COVID-19 infection, it will be also discussed in uh, next sessions. Still, uh, 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 we are uh, actually in uh, schematically, we are telling that these are all, all different symptoms. Symptoms of COVID-19, uh, of some uh, person he is uh, coughing uh, and that particular type of dry uh, cough that's the uh, major symptom i have already told you in about 70 percent cases uh, that uh, dry cough symptom is found as well as fever uh, uh, more than 101 degrees celsius body temperature it's another symptom of covid 19 infection though all uh, these other symptoms are uh, also you can observe in different persons. And uh, how well uh, this uh, actually it occurs through uh, droplets, and these droplets are generally produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes, and uh, that. Uh, sneezing particles or coughing particles that contains uh, those viruses and they actually transmits from uh, the infected person to other healthy persons and two major routes of this uh, transmission is one that spreads touching the surface also the chances will be there that they may enter into our body so through regular hand hygiene cleaning of frequent uh, touch surface that can reduce the risk of uh, its infection 
uh, how samples are actually uh, tested, how they are collected, and then how they are actually transported to the labs, and they ultimately uh, they are being uh, tested for uh, the confirmation of this virus. Generally, the um, BSL-3 uh, types of laboratories, uh, you know, uh, as it's a contagious, so uh, some unique type of uh, lab facility should be there. So we, uh, they actually can perform such type of uh, experiments, where generally upper respiratory tract, uh, uh, that is nasopharyngeal specimen, or uh, oropharyngeal specimen, or nasal mild turbulent uh, um, uh, turbinate uh, swabs or interior, uh, uh, anterior nares or nasopharyngeal was or upper respiratory tract or sometimes from uh, lower respiratory tract the bronchoalveolar clavage or tracheal aspirate or pleural fluid or lung biopsy that may be taken and they are immediately after collection generally stored in uh, the refrigerator that should be within two to eight degrees celsius and at that temperature you can keep it for uh, up to three days and ultimately sent for diagnosis esr based wbc count based crp based or uh, procalcium uh, thrombin uh, based uh, diagnosis uh, that are uh, easy, uh, easier ones uh -huh. and nowadays we are getting um, antibody test or uh, serological test the confirmatory test that is rt-pcr based so uh, all uh, these uh, types of uh, tests are there but only the artificial based uh, test it is the confirmatory test and it sometimes requires uh, uh, six to eight hours. Therefore, whenever we give our samples to uh, uh, problem now, maybe in the near future, the test uh, time uh, it may be uh, reduced. And in future, uh, what we are getting uh, effect uh, on the society is that it is affecting uh, the business and ultimately the economy of different countries, mostly uh, the third world countries. Uh, they are highly affected, though the advanced uh, countries, they are also suffering uh, because it is affecting uh, the businesses. Actually, uh, the governmental agencies uh, or non-governmental agencies all are suffering from uh, this uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, so we need to, uh, thereby we can actually uh, do not hamper uh, the economy uh, of a country. So in near future, I think the, uh, the governmental agencies they will do something so that uh, we will not uh, empower, uh, we will not suffer. And another one is uh, the effect on education uh, because uh, we, we uh, the teachers, the students, we are suffering a lot. Uh, we need our students, uh, they must sit uh, nearer to us so that we can interact with them uh, easily. But in last three, four months, what we are getting uh, actually, uh, what we are, uh, we are away about uh, hundreds of kilometers away and through internet connectivity, we are taking some online classes. But this is uh, not the solution. Uh, they are soon to have some uh, planning, maybe some and long term planning. Uh, we'll actually uh, will do uh, good for uh, the education. Uh, here I have uh, actually listed some planning uh, that can uh, be 
therapy uh, for short term benefit as well as for uh, long term benefit. But we must be aware that uh, India, uh, we have a lot of <coughs> people who have well, actually who have uh, the problem of uh, economy. Uh, that means uh, they does not have enough uh, fund to utilize such online services. Therefore, uh, in case of teaching also, uh, till we are unable to give free internet facilities to the students or to the devices, uh, uh, different uh, uh, gadgets, uh, we should not uh, actually uh, go 100% that 100% uh, uh, online uh, teaching or uh, evaluation process. <coughs> I think uh, this is all about my today's uh, lecture. Uh, these are some references. And if you have any queries, you may send your queries in this email address. So thank you all. If you have any queries, you can uh, ask. Hello, thank you very much, sir. Ah, hello. Huh. Thank you very much for this presentation. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it was uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, uh, I got a lot of questions from the participants. So okay. as we uh, requested them, them, yeah, yeah. As we requested them to put their questions in the comment box. So uh, I have uh, tried to uh, uh, take a few questions away from that comment box. Uh, one has asked uh, why this virus is symptomless. Yes. Uh, actually, symptom uh, only when uh, uh, symptom occurs when that virus enters into your body and uh, make uh, that amount of infection which. Uh, uh, is visible from outside. Uh, I have already told you that whenever virus enters into our body, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, virus uh, may be able to penetrate the uh, uh, internal parts of the lungs, but uh, it may remain in uh, your uh, nasopharyngeal uh, region or sometimes uh, uh, I have already told you that uh, whenever they want to enter into our uh, cellular structure, they have some spike proteins. So compatibility requires for the spike, pro uh, spike proteins to be attached with our cell surface proteins. So sometimes if that kind of compatibility uh, is not found in some of the persons, virus may enter into their body but it is unable to do any uh, severe things on them. Therefore, uh, we do not found any symptom on those patients. And uh, <coughs> COVID-2, what we are getting more than 50% um, uh, uh, patients uh, uh, are not showing any. So before going to that RT-PCR uh, exam, we, we cannot even imagine that uh, that person have uh, that viruses on them. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, again, uh, one question: uh, uh, Out of seven strain, which one is more pathogenic? Uh, which of oh, all the uh, among all these strains? Huh. Yeah, so which one is more seven. pathogenic? Yes, uh, I, I, I have told you, SARS, MARS. Uh, actually, uh, uh, last one is uh, SARS-2. Uh, I think uh, in terms of severity, because uh, severity uh, depends on two things. One is how contagious it is. And second one is uh, uh, on the uh, death rate. So if we consider the death rate, COVID-2 is, uh, this COVID-19 is uh, less severe in, in that term. 
but if we consider its uh, infectability that means how uh, it actually causes infections uh, then it, you you are observing that it has already infected uh, uh, several million people uh, and uh, in total uh, about 4 lakh people there have uh, died that time you can say that uh, this uh, sars cov 2 is uh, more uh, more severe one okay sir so the, the last question sir uh, 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 is covid 19 going to change the structural conformation so uh, uh, one of the participants structurally, structurally they are not changing that much structurally they are spike proteins uh, nature of those uh, spike proteins are almost same but genetically they are changing genetically they are changing i have uh, shown you a uh, structure where you can found that the sample collected from brazil mexico usa or china they have uh, certain uh, uh, differences in their genetic makeup and uh, in india also there are uh, two strains which are uh, found in most of the individuals so that means uh, in some way uh, there are mutations uh, occurring that means they are uh, they are mutating uh, day by day i think uh, okay sir uh, thank you uh, for this uh, Hello. Hello. Ah, hello. Uh, thank you, sir, for this uh, exhaustive and oil research presentation. Uh, I think uh, uh, the uh, the aim with which we started this seminar is the uh, at the end of the seminar we can uh, boast of that uh, we have achieved that aim. We have gained uh, that uh, uh, purpose. So uh, thank you once again, sir, on behalf of NSSC Needs uh, Mindapur College uh, for this uh, brilliant presentation on COVID-19 and its uh, preventive measure, uh, which is a, a great concern of uh, all of us, for all of us. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, now uh, we'll uh, 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 move on to our second speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Posun Priyo Nayak. Uh, uh, I welcome uh, you, sir, to this uh, international webinar on behalf of NSS Needs in the Book College. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm. Okay, sir. So uh, before we start, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce our speaker to our participant, Dr. Posin Priyonayak. Uh, he is uh, now uh, associated with All India Institute of Medical Science, AIMS, that is known as uh, Jodhpur. India. Uh, uh, Professor Nag has uh, 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 experienced more than 20 years. Uh, he has a lot of publications, uh, citations, high index, uh, uh, Google Scholar, we can say, uh, uh, several awards like uh, Professor S.B. Despande Award uh, that he received in 2018 uh, the from the Association of Physiologist of India for the best research work in neurophysiology. Uh, again, uh, he has another award, Professor P. B. Sam Memorial Oration Award by Physiological Society of India in 2017. Professor, again, another award, Professor B. B. Sorkar Memorial Oration Award by Physiological Society of India in 2011. Uh, he received gold medal uh, uh, in uh, to 1989 uh, from Vidyasagar University. Uh, he has uh, several fellowships like uh, that he has been awarded Young Scientist Fellowship, 16th, 16th International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology a Conference, uh, New Delhi, India. Uh, again, he was awarded International Union of Physiological Societies Fellowship to attend 33rd International Congress of Physiological Sciences, St. Petersburg, uh, Russia. Uh, he is the reviewer of uh, 15 journals. Uh, uh, and uh, also, uh, he is the me a member of editorial board uh, of 10 national and international journals. 
so uh, i welcome you uh, once again sir to this international oil minor so uh, uh, now uh, 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 he will talk on the basic knowledge how to prevent covid 19 infection so i request you sir sure. to uh, start your uh, session <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, am I clearly audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for the for, for such an uh, outstanding. It's like so nice of you to have this type of uh, information introduction for me. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee to giving me this opportunity for this uh, for speaking here on uh, basic know-how to prevent COVID-19 infection. Uh, my earlier speaker, Dr. Devdulal, he has uh, nicely presented and it, in fact, he has uh, made the uh, stage so nice for me, it, it became easy for me to continue the, uh, I hope I can continue the legacy of what he has said. Before I start uh, about this, uh, I would like to display some disclaimer. The information shared here are for general information only and not to be used for treatment of any patient. No financial issue is involved in the process of sharing this information in this presentation. Many of the information and illustrations are collected from publicly available data sheet or fact sheet. Most of the copyright information are shared as footnote. However, if not shared, then it might be available in many sites and unable to decide the credit specifically. Speaker of this presentation has no intention to undermine the credit of the creator of those creations. Uh, in the process of this discussion, uh, the basic know-how is to prevent COVID-19 infection. But I thought that we will have a list of information and uh, many of that is known already I will, uh, and uh, my earlier speaker Dr. Dekhinal has also covered quite a bit of it and I will just uh, re-emphasize those things so that we can have a background a readiness to prevent the illness. I have divided it into these topics like what is COVID-19, how it infects us, how deadly it is, how it spreads, how to identify the infection, how to avoid the infection, and finally, how to protect us, the self. So, to start with, what is COVID-19? I think it's already clear that these are the coronaviruses, which are a large family of viruses that caused a wide range of illness. Which illness, as the question was asked recently uh, to my earlier speaker, that some patients, we, can, we see the symptom. In some patients, they remain, it, the infection remain asymptomatic. So, the coronaviruses, they can create problems or illness, starting from common cold to more severe diseases which pneumonia type, type of disease. The coronaviruses, as it is uh, international committee of taxon of or nomen, taxonomy and nomenclature of viruses, they 2009 released it that uh, there are in March 2020, they approved that uh, there are four rings, nine kingdoms, 16 phyla, Two subphyla, 36 classes, 55 orders, 8 suborders, 
168 families, 103 subfamilies, 1421 genera, 68 subgenera, and overall 6590 species. This tell us this information let us understand that the plethora of coronavirus is huge and out of that only few become so severe that we need to bother about it. Like in 2003 there was a severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS-CoV. Then Middle East respiratory syndrome in 2012. These were like quite regional, but the latest one, 2019, it became so severe and pan world, worldwide. That's why it became pandemic. And the name is given as COVID-19. So it's the coronavirus disease, which is seen to have been identified in 2019, that is COVID-19. So these transmission, if we see carefully, these transmission, they are not directly coming to him. Higher, some rodents, bad, and then in between we have some intermediary transit points. And then from those transmit points, it is coming to him. Like earlier in 2003, we had that SARS, which was supplied, which was transmitted to humans by civet cats. Whereas in uh, March 2012, March COVID, that has been transmitted by dormitory camels. Uh, how suddenly these uh, specific species? They are, uh, I think these seven species already uh, it has been discussed, how they become so transmittable, so transferable from one species, one animal to other animals and to human. Basically, if we see the structure, we'll see a little, little, little later and already we have seen in earlier speaker that there are some mutations, some translocation during the process of their formation. These translocations, they made them, they acquire new target animals. And from those target animals, the human, it is coming, exposure comes to human. So in 2019, the SARS-CoV-2, the new one, is believed to be transmitted to humans through pangolins that are illegally sold in Chinese market, the way so-called Wuhan wet market. However, there is no uh, means like uh, politically it has been uh, denied. Sometimes it is accepted. It's a uh, other story. We are not going into that. So finally, the 2019 SARS-CoV-2 SARS. -CoV -2, SARS of two that has been SARS-CoV-2 that has been identified and it's creating so much of have a restless in us that it we are all discussing about this disease and the disease is named as SARS uh, this COVID-19 and the strain is responsible for this is SARS-CoV-2. Seeing the structure already it has been discussed that these are coronavirus, so there will be some spike proteins on the surface which appear in the corona as if that uh, uh, you might one might remember that uh, we had that eclipse, cool eclipse, solar eclipse there we have seen the corona of sun when whole uh, full uh, solar eclipse was there. There is some similarity in that and it uh, appears spikes in electron microscopic structures. It appears as spikes. So the name is Corona 
and that it's a, as already we have discussed it's a huge family now <coughs> structure wise these there are some spike glycoproteins as you can see spike glycoproteins then some membranous proteins which are forming the envelope and within this envelope there is rna and nucleoprotein this rna is protected you can see this thin line within this that is the rna and which is protected by nuclear protein this spike glycoprotein which gives us that gives these virus that corona like appearance these spike glycoproteins they have a binding domain a receptor binding domain the so called rbd this receptor binding domain is very important to bind with as2 receptor the mutation and translocation of these nuclear fracture nuclear fractions that lead to increase the affinity of these spike proteins or say uh, receptor binding domains of these spike proteins towards the as2 of human and that that specific translocation that specific mutation is important for creating this problem to us as already we have seen that the these are the as2 receptor as2 is angiotensin converting enzyme which is very important uh, for our uh, large cardiovascular system there is that is actually as protein ace s1 not the, this two S2 is a little bit different from that one which is uh, involved in blood pressure maintenance uh, one might be knowing about that S blocker we use for blood pressure regulation it's a little different of that S2 this is S2 receptor this S2 protein they can bind with the receptor binding domain of these spike proteins and once they bind the as2 receptor is cleaved off in presence of another transmembrane type 2 transmembrane serine protease type 2 transmembrane serine protease in presence of this this cleaving is done and the interaction started so we need these two proteins as2 proteins and the tmprs are tmpr ss2 these two proteins which are present in our body cells these two proteins they become instrumental to allow this corona virus to come inside the cell so those who have very high affinity binding here they allow the most of this corona virus coming inside it and other immunity or other nutritional status they also help to produce symptom or not to produce symptom so what we understood that the corona virus structure and how this structure and the body proteins body cell membrane proteins which allow them to go inside the cell now which cells they have these two proteins these two proteins are present in lungs kidney heart gastrointestinal tract so these and sometimes even in blood vessels so these cells they become easy target so first we have understood that how the animals become target then with modification they come to us are uh, transmitted to human and within human body how these proteins presence of these s2 and tmpr are ss2 proteins allow these corona virus to go inside the cell within the cell like 
any protein formation translation is started, but there is a big problem. The nuclear material here within the virus is RNA, and then the RNA positive has to be trans replicated, and then from the replication we have to initiate the translation process. There also a little bit of uh, modification is there, like that of human. It's not that mm -hmm. way directly as such. So there is little modification. Those modifications allow the replication of RNA, more and more mm -hmm. RNA. is not there. And is normally it is not but few proteins which are synthesized by the virus and they help in the replication so RNA, then Hello. influence of RNA I will will be Hello, anything? So, Now, uh, these viral proteins, these replicated RNAs, they are assembled within the Golgi apparatus and virions are formed. These virions now become released in outside the cell, which can infect new cells. So, like all other viruses, they are utilizing our cellular machinery for translation as well as replication of the system so that they can produce many more of their same products. And finally, they start leaving the cell that you can see these yellow cells, they are the virions, newly formed viruses. They are coming out of the these uh, cultured cells, which is seen in land. So uh, one virus can multiply itself so by using the host machinery so that we can produce, we can get many more viruses, newly performed viruses. So in this problem, there are actually points. Points are number one, transmission, number two, affinity binding, number three, use of the for transmission, for replication, and finally, release of these proteins, these newly formed viruses into the body space. Now we'll see how deadly this virus is. As you can see here, that the death rate is growing, may not be huge, but in India, it's gradually rising. So until now, no promising clinical treatment or prevention strategies have been developed against human coronavirus. Even prevention strategies also not very specific for coronavirus. We don't have any specific uh, prophylactic control that we can control this infection. However, the researchers are working to develop the efficient therapeutic strategy to cope with the novel coronavirus. On the basis of antivirals, what we have used earlier in SARS and MARS, like in 2003 and 2012, along with that, on that basis or with that experience, my this uh, patients, mice models, and with clinical isolated being utilized these antivirals like remdesivir, lopinavir, ritonavir, oscillatamivir significantly block the infection 
in infected patient so we can we have some level of information about the controlling it until and but within the infected patient not in profile access not in preparedness so we have to know it and we have to prevent it by means of some non pharmacological means that is very important so we have normally when we are managing a particular disease particular kind illness we have two options pharmacologic non pharmacologic as of now we don't have any concrete evidence of pharmacological control so we have to utilize the non pharmacological means so that we can have a control over the infection and the overall process so to see how it spreads obviously it has been already known to you and discussed earlier the air droplets from an infected patient can cause the infection to a uninfected person so this this is what is direct direct airborne uh, this uh, droplet based infection these viruses they are coming out of this drop along with this droplet and they remain not only in air they can remain for some time within different surfaces so we need to be very careful in handling this type of a person with the already live infection it can be direct contact also so by having direct contact coming in direct contact uh, shaking hand or indirect contact with the infected person it can infect the other which again it can go into public and can distribute the spread it can spread the infection on the other hand the infected person if it is if they are using a common instrument then the if the it remains with that instrument and an uninfected person when in come in contact with them they become infected so this become there are three strategies three ways of spreading yeah uh, this is number one is droplets number two direct contact and number three indirect contact so this this is how one infected patient can keep increasing the number of patient in live infection into when they are going interacting with the public so we very very careful in controlling these spreads now this is a nice diagram so from a website that how it gets multiplied and more importantly how we can stop this multiplication just by non pharmacological few simple steps we can stop this massive spread by working from home not public inter interaction with public like not using public transport staying at home isolation this type of things can stop the outbreak of this infection now how to identify this infection to have some sim simplified information simplified identification we it can be it can be called as symptom or sometimes it's like some information which collectively give an idea that okay there is a chance of this type of this covid 19 infection here i have listed few infection like coughing fever chills muscle pain shortness of breath or difficulty in breathing sore throat and finally recent loss of taste or smell these infections these uh, symptoms they may be all of them may not not necessarily be there not necessarily that all of them must be there then only we can think of covid infection 
not necessarily any two or three symptoms can give the infection. So it is just a suspicion by seeing this any two or three of these symptoms, if they are present, they give us a suspicion. Am I infected? Is he or she infected? So we identify these symptoms and we can utilize them. So I'm making it very clear, not necessarily that all these seven symptoms will be present for an infection. And if any two, three or four, even five infections are present, five symptoms are present, not necessarily that the person is infected with COVID-19. So it's a little confusing. It is these symptoms are important for screening whether the person should be screened for the infection, present live infection or not to use that. Now, let us see which one is the most common. The common symptom is include fever. You know, fever can be for any other reason also. So just having fever, not necessary. But fever is a very important symptom for the COVID-19. Loss of appetite, fatigue, loss of smell. It can be recent loss or just suppression. Shortness of breath or the difficulty of breathing, cough. 82% cases cough, coughing up with sputum, very few, 33%, muscle pain, body pain, 35%. So as you can see, not necessarily all the, pre all the symptoms will be present in all the cases. In severe conditions, there will be, there may be difficulty in waking up, there will be confusion, bluish face or lips like hy hypoxia like symptom, coughing of blood, persistent chest pain, decreased blood cells, kidney failure, high fever, persistent high fever. So depending on the symptoms, it can be severe or commonly. So common symptoms, they may be matching even with others. Like it can be common cold or a flu or even allergies, not necessarily that all of them should be the COVID-19. A little bit of it's a comparison how we can separate, how can how we can identify them. Like it's, it's like allergy, uh, like uh, it's a uh, the severity is another important problem in this COVID-19 that it starts very slowly, but by the time it starts, it's having huge body problem, huge physical problem. So we have to be very, very careful to not to be pray for this uh, infection. How to avoid this infection? I have listed nine points here. Number one is the physical distancing. Obviously like one meter or two meters distance if we keep maintaining hygienic habits healthy habits cleaning or not uh, like uh, distributing not uh, infecting the others things or common things respiratory protection like using mask or even if mask is not available we need to off so that in case there is infection we have to not to be not to suffer. Then protecting the soft targets. Sometimes our hands are common. Surfaces we use them very very commonly to many things. So we should not touch our eyes, nose, mouth, so that the virus which is present in hand they should not gain access to our body inside of the body then obviously we should hand wash washing the hands that will reduce the infection if hand is clean then even if it is touched it's a common way of uh, 
like uh, irritation, irritation, or something. We commonly touch our uh, this soft toe or target. So we should keep the hand wash always as much as possible. Cleaning and disinfection. Keep the available surfaces like door knobs, uh, door handle, the table, kitchen thing, uh, jug, water jug uh, handle, fan switch, uh, lift switch. Those should be cleaned and disinfected, which are commonly touched by many persons. Then self-isolation. In case I feel like I have an issue, I may have an issue of like having cough or I am fe feeling fever is or uh, body ache. Let me isolate, not to spread it inside in along with others. Then peer check. Sometimes uh, like we don't understand that whether we are not uh, deciding, we are not able to decide whether to uh, think myself infected or not. Should we suspicious? Should we suspect myself or not? Then friends, those who are seeing from outside, they can help us. Okay, you look like sick. Why don't you uh, take a medical advice? Then protecting the high risk, like pregnant, like uh, older age, like uh, malnourished, like those who are under uh, treatment, like uh, cancer treatment, or those who have recently got some. Uh, graft, tissue graft, so that immunocompromised, malnourished, these persons who should protect them from exposure to any type of risk factors. So these are the basic requirements like physical distancing, not mixing with everybody every time, so uh, like keeping a little distance between one to one while talking, while exchanging, while uh, shopping, while uh, taking food, all types of uh, physical barrier type. It's like a, making a, a physical barrier, uh, imagination, imaginary physical barrier surrounding me. Then I should having a good hygiene habit. I won't litter things. I won't use the wrong procedure to clean my face and then throw them out anyway. Not like that. We should use proper place, proper way, proper disposal. Then respiratory protection, mask is must. Protecting soft touch. However, while using mask, it must be taken care of that you are not having problem to wear a mask. Yeah, after wearing a mask, if you are feeling like I'm breathlessness and tightness of chest, if this type of things are there, then it should be taken care of immediately. Won't touch the open parts of our body so that the soft body, even virus, is not able to go inside the body by myself. Then cleaning and disinfecting keeping the most usable, most contacted surfaces, whatever way, clean it and then disinfect if possible. Self-isolation, in case I am, I am think, I am suspicious that I may have, may have some infection, let me isolate myself. Hand wash so that no problem created for myself or for others. Peer check so that if we are undecided, we are not able to decide whether to take medical help or not, whether to think of self-isolation or not, whether to change my hygienic habits or not, whether am I following the proper respiratory protection, am I following the proper hygiene, those things, friends, others can tell us and we can protect us ourselves. Obviously, we should protect those who are high risk, having high risk, like the patients with diabetes, patients with kidney disorder, patients uh, recently having uh, some tissue graft, patients with uh, cancer, treatment, going undergoing cancer treatment, those then uh, pregnant, those people we should protect them from getting this infection. Now. 
how to protect self till now what we have discussed those things if we can we try to pack it in a uh, self content uh, self uh, for our own use then we should uh, have these five points in our mind beware about the covid 19 be a suspicious observer practice in hygiene confident self containment support fellows and administrator let me elaborate a little bit there are many information i have given uh, some information from who that uh, we can be aware about the information about covid 19 like the uh, as we are uh, participating in this webinar that means we are knowing about it be aware about it be known about knowing these things if you know then only you can protect yeah, yourself. knowing these facts about the covid 19 is a very important yeah. step yeah. next one yeah. yeah. suspicious observer we should be vigilant about likely infected or contacted individuals so that we can protect us that okay he was in contact we should have a record like if possible if we can have a record like who or whom i am visiting or whom i have in contact with so that we can be traced easily be vigilant about likely contaminated surface or objects like in shops like if the shopkeeper is uh, not using uh, gloves or if shopkeeper is not using mask then we can we can suggest them that uh, please have a mask or have gloves so that protect yourself as well as protect us be vigilant about the likely transmission of virus if you feel like something is wrong in that one area we should avoid those areas so if it's like a, it's a mental uh, psychological preparedness yes I, I i i am an observer i want to know that there is no unduly things are coming in my way then we should be very good in practicing hygiene there are many uh, sanitizers available for hand wash uh, hand rub and soap wash and i believe there are uh, as i understand from the uh, this uh, program leaflet that there are these further details of these procedures how to have the hand rub and how to use the hand wash if you are using soap water how you will do those things there are some specific way to confirm that yes you have cleaned the all parts of heart, uh, hands your hands so observe the hand hygiene observe the respiratory hygiene using mask if required when you are uh, in public or you are talking to one to one or you feel like you are going to a place where there is a chance of infection one should one must wear the mask then keeping the surroundings clean so that even if there is a chance of if the virus is district virus came there the virus is treated there still it should not survive let it dry let it be dry and clean and do not spit that's a bad habit we have in our uh, country that we spit everywhere that's a very bad habit so if we do if we control those things or if we uh, control others also not to just to inform okay please don't do this that will help us to keep the hygiene keep the environment clean and control then confident self containment obviously until unless it is a necessary avoiding avoid social gathering or public interaction if possible we can have a nice way of digital contact nice way of having talk or if we keep a distance physical distance between the interactive persons then 
in case it is uh, identified or if not even if it just you are suspicious whether i may have may not have fine i am happy but if i am having we should have a self isolation but while someone is in self isolation we should keep our mood elevated having good nutritive food these two are very important having a good nutrition keep your immunology immune system up boosted as well as if your mood is good if you are happy so that your uh, uh, the cortisol secretion the hormone secretions of your body will be good and they will uh, help you to keep your immune system up uh, immune system to ready to fight with the probable infection avoiding sharing sharing the personal belongings if we uh, must avoid sharing personal belongings nowadays then helping the needy fellow citizens sometimes we understand that okay if we if we have little bit help others it will be good life for them social networking for support or need not physical contact social contact social networking then follow the rules and regulation those are imposed on us only because we we need to uh, someone help us to be healthy and happy so these are the five cross five systems how to protect self hopefully this will be helping you so during this process of uh, know hows i try to give a, a overall information about the uh, covid 19 how it infect us how deadly it is how it spread it and how we can identify the infection obviously once we can identify the infection then we can identify how to avoid it and most most importantly how we can protect ourselves that's all from my side thank you very much for your uh, present hearing and i thank again the organizer and the members of the committee to giving me an opportunity to talk to you hopefully i have enjoyed it stay safe stay home stay healthy thank you uh thank you sir uh, uh for <coughs> this uh, uh all this uh, presentation uh, uh so uh, before we move on to the next uh, speaker uh, as we said that we will have questions at the end of each uh, session is deliberation so uh, uh the questions that they put uh, on the comment in the comment box i have filtered uh, three out of them so one is asking is boosting immunity harmful after onset of symptoms of psychotic in storm i couldn't get the last one psycho psycho uh, cytokine acha cyto cytokine storm cytokine okay ah uh, cytokine storm uh, see uh, the uh, as i have mentioned that this infection came for with 2019 only so it's not uh, very clear to us that uh, how and what will be really good and uh, what will may go wrong with us so there is a chance of cytokine storm but uh, i don't think uh, still now we can have any evidence to not to boost up the immunity okay and so another question uh, can the serum collected from infected persons can be used to treat other infected persons uh infected persons to infected persons uh, may not be that good but once the person has recovered so we can uh, we can think that the body has learned a little bit from this process of infection and then finally recovering about against it that processes leave some immune substances some uh, cytokine as you have said one has suggested into the body fluids those may be helpful and uh, there were there are some uh, studies going on using that uh, serum uh, transmission serum uh, 
replace serum therapy and uh, they were suggesting it's a it's helpful okay sir. so uh, uh, thank you sir uh, it's uh, really wonderful to listen to uh, such a, a speaker who is now on the uh, front line so uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you one second sir so uh, now uh, we will move on to the next speaker uh, uh, dr bhargav uh, yes yeah audible am yeah. i audible yes 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 yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so, sir, I welcome, I welcome you uh, on behalf of NSS in its Mirnapur College to this international webinar on COVID-19 and its uh, uh, preventive measure. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank so, you, sir. Uh, uh, before uh, we start uh, our session, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our speaker to our participants. Uh, so, Dr. Deepak Bhagav, uh, he is a professor of microbiology, National Medical College, Nepal, and uh, he is going to... Uh, talk on uh, how infectious is COVID-19. And uh, Professor Bhargav, uh, he is having 16 years uh, teaching experience. Uh, he is an, uh, working now working as a professor in HOD of the Department of Microbiology in National Medical College and teaching hospital of Trivuvan University, Nepal, uh, since 2016. He also worked as an associate professor and HOD of the Department of Microbiology in National Medical College and teaching hospital of Tripona University uh, 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 from 10, uh, 2010 to 16. Previously, he worked as an assistant professor and he was in charge of the Department of Microbiology in National Medical College and teaching hospital of Tripona University in Nepal from 2004 to 2010. Uh, he has uh, more than 17 international publications and his uh, area of research interest include antimicrobial resistance in bacteria effect of alternative drugs in bacteria so uh, one second one second i i i, I sir, sir i welcome you to this uh, international webinar of binapur college so uh, thank you sir for a nice in nice introduction uh, good afternoon to all of you uh, good, afternoon. good afternoon to all of you we are here because of this unprecedented pandemic which we are going through. And eventually, I'd like to thank our previous speaker also, who has given us a nice platform to introduce this particular topic, that how infectious is COVID-19. Uh, let's go through it. Uh, what we are at presently, this uh, introduction of this COVID-19 in 2019, the month of December, at that point of time, we does not have that uh, knowing that what can can do after only that china has reported to who and then it spreads only so let's start how infectious is covid 19 now as colorful and appealing this microscopically appears these are as deadly as they can be uh, viruses have a very underlying feature that they only depend on the host cell which have been nicely described by the other speakers the nice that they are depending on the host cells and without host cell, they cannot survive. Outside, they work as an inert particle, but they are very deadly. That can be seen. And uh, already it has been said, this is a large family of viruses bearing crown-like spikes and on their outer surface, which causes a range of illness in humans with symptoms from common cold to severe diseases they can cause, which is severity varies. Severity varies on the comorbidity, severity varies on the age also, severity varies on the particularly immune system of a particular person. So it can be varied. So this is already we know. Now what is our goal is that to know how infectious or where we are standing right now. And that can be only been known by means of this chart can explain if a particular person who has been infected with it or one infected person, it can spread to two persons and from there each of them can perform to another two. In this way it can spread if whether control measures are not properly been taken. It can increase from two to there will be three also. So this can be ideally defined by basic case reproduction number or what is known as the R0 which has been represented as R0. What basic case reproduction number says that it can be defined as the average number of secondary cases per case in a totally susceptible population. Why we are saying as the totally susceptible population because this virus is a new one 
And as it is a new virus, then we have to take all the person who have been here in this world or in our country also, they all are susceptible to this virus. So that's why this average number of secondary cases per case in a totally susceptible population have been said as the basic case reproduction number or which has been said as the R0. And when we go through it, in case of COVID-19, what we know is that this can be said where we are standing is right now is R0 greater than 1. That is number of cases increases and it is in increasing still now. And there is a <clears throat> Right from you can say that R not equal to one, but it says number of cases is stable. So there is a big gap is there. We are standing here R not greater than one, and then we are coming back to R not equal to one. To achieve this, we have to take a giant leap. Otherwise, unless we have a developed the herd immunity, or now the query is that are we in a position to expose such a big population in the name of herd immunity to make the cases stable? That is the big query, but already we have unlocked the phase of unlock one. We have given it and hoping that the number of cases are going to be stable if the threshold level of herd immunity will be developed. And it only other way of coming to equal to one is that if the vaccinations come into existence and that takes around one year from now. So are not we are standing over here and to coming over here, it takes time. It's not that's why until then we have to take certain protective measures and then only we can be particularly effective to say where we are standing, where it is equal to one. And then there is a question of when it comes and number of cases decreases. That is are not less than one. So it is a big time. It is a we have to go through a very phases wise. Otherwise, we cannot control it. So R not greater than one. Then we have to achieve R not equal to one. Then there is the less than one. Until or unless vaccination is available, protection measures are the only choice. Have been there. What World WHO and CDC are also been claiming that every country has been in this phase of R not greater than one and to come to R not equal to one. That's the basic case reproduction number. It's a big gap is there. So until then, we have to take care of that. If no other things can arise or no other susceptible population can get affected for that, that's why the lockdowns have been implemented. And the what we have achieved still now that we have been going to, but there is an increase in cases. Now it has been seen. And that is obviously there is a surge will also come. There's no matter of that fact. So that's why from here to equal to one and then to less than one, it takes time. And even if the vaccine arises, we have to know what is the effectivity of the vaccines. A virus, this virus, COVID-19, is a very slow changing viruses. It's a very slow changing. If it is a changes very rapidly, it might produce some deleterious proteins or some deleterious mutations, and it might get either pathogenicity might get be reduced. But as it is changing slowly, until the vaccination has came, whether that vaccine is effective enough. That also be the matter of saying too. So this is going to stay with us. That's why the query is the COVID-19 is going to stay with us. And we have to be focused on how to live with this COVID-19 disease. And it is caused by as SARS coronavirus 2. This RO basic case reproduction for COVID-19 stands around 2 to 3. Minimum it has been there 1.5 and maximum 4.5 or which has been in the starting case in the Italy, Italy and Spain, it has been find out that it has been around 4.5. What it says exactly is that that when on a global average, it has been seen as mostly about two to three, it has been found. But if you take the case of New York, where it is a Manhattan, there is a it grows around near to presently large number of ex severe cases are there and death rate have been increased like nothing. So that's why uh, for it, it is 2.3. It means that in the early stage of the epidemic, using the available data in one, on an average, two to three people are get affected and accordingly they will spread simultaneously. So that is the basic case reproduction number for COVID-19 and it can spread. And eventually what it leads to, leads to total spread. Why we're saying in the starting phase in Italy, it has been 4.5 and near to five or cases have been per person is affecting. Because in that case, after the new year in the China, they have 
open their airport and from china lot of people goes through the airport and that leads to transmission of the disease much more highly by going back to italy these chinese people had organized parties for their clients and as a result of fact that has spread very easily so that our basic get product <clears throat> increased like nothing in case of in those part of the world and when we say some people have said if you know the threat of the disease even you cannot put your mouth outside of the window that is a threat of the disease at that point of the time but nowadays we have been for the last two or three months we have been accomplished and uh, we have seen it very rapidly there is a increases are going on still now why this lockdown has been implemented so that we can make it proper that in our district setup we have a proper setup if any severity cases appear that we can able to manage it and that ro number that only says that depends on three factors particularly what is the duration of ill infectiousness what is second point is the probability of infection being transmitted during contact between a susceptible and infected individual these two characteristic features depends on the characteristics of a virus the duration of infectiousness and what is the probability of infection the last one that average rate of contact between a second between a susceptible and infected individual this depends on the population how they are restricting as our previous speaker says dr naik is well described that we have to be cautious enough so that we have to suspicious enough and we have to maintain the normal respiratory etiquette and that average rate of contact between susceptible and infected individual that depends on the population and but first to one how much duration of the infectiousness what the viruses proteins they have been expressing what is the probability of infection <clears throat> transmitted during contact between a susceptible and infected individual did all these two points depends on the characteristics of the viruses and this is a very slow changing virus we have to we have, changes are going very slowly through this but once the severity stage attains there is a very hard to control it that is the major important that's why the aged persons above 65 they are much more prone to this infection if they are exposed to it having person having comorbid conditions like diabetics they are very much prone to this so ro depends or basic case reproduction number or r not depends on these three factors particularly and this for covid 19 as we say minimum is 1.5 greater than 1 and maximum it can goes up 4.5 or up to 5 cases one person can spread that is the severity of the cases now it also depends this r not also depends if you compare with the other diseases we have founding it that it is parallel to the case of sars ebola and flu in sars it is with three cases but r that is been the r not is been of the three R not of for Ebola is two. R not for flu is one point five to three. Whereas in case of starting case of measles, until there is a vaccination is there, even it is a fifteen has been there. Lot of cases have been there. The chicken pox. Compared to it, it has been very less. But only certain percent, that is five to ten percent cases are going to be very much severe in amount. That is the only thing for R not can say. Our basic case reproduction number that much is infectious. It is. It, but the severity is less we have to the severity is low once it is become severe it become very dreadful so and it can cause the airway blockages ultimately ventilations have been ventilators are required I and mean, we did, i doubt whether we have fifth generation ventilator sub present or not when that cases it is very hard to survive the patients even in the intensive care units that we are finding out uh then secondary attack rate this is when r not and particularly it has been much more related to this one these are the proportion of those or people who have been exposed to the primary case and that should develop the disease as a result of the exposure this secondary attack rate is the proportion of those persons who are exposed to the primary case that develops the disease or they have the same terms and as a result of the exposures though nowadays asymptomatic cases are there but it has been that that developed the disease should be and as a result of exposure to the primary case that should be present over there and this secondary attack rate is very useful in the study of the spread of the infection that transmit from person to person in specific situations like household and schools 
and when the, now the schools are not op open but once it has been open but how much it has been spreading in france they have already opened the school and eventually after two weeks time they one or two weeks their secondary rate have been increased they shut down the schools again so that is we have to take care of before going taking any decisions we have to take care of whether we are in a position to open it or whether we wait so that we have to attend that particular area that where the are not has been going down the story going down until then we have to this alternative procedures we have to take care of so one example we can give the secondary attack rate for sars oh, when it has been appeared in singapore number of household members exposed to cases are 417 cases and from there new cases are 26 and there we can found that secondary attack rate is 6.2 percent in case of sars that is the example we have known to us this particularly is a contact specific first of all it depends on closeness of contact and in secondary attack rate is higher in those caring for patients in case of sars in china it is of 31 percent than who are living in particular residence because in sars who have been admitted in the hospitals they have been much more in contact with the hospital caregivers and they easily spread it than in living in same residence because the severity of the infection when the person is in this resident it is not like the normal symptoms common cold like symptoms arises but once the severity has been arises it has been shifted to the hospitals even in the icu and they can spread very easily the stage of illness the stage of illness is one of the major factor which stage person is been there if it has been with a comorbid condition it is coming up if in the hospitals then as if it in a hospital due to the stage of illness and we have to intubate the some persons in a clinical person we have to intubate it and in intubation is a aerosolization generation procedure if the aerosolized appear if the proper protective equipments or ppes are not been available to the hospital caregivers they might spread the infection so that is the secondary attack rate so we have to be very careful regarding this situations can if might be arising so these R0 and secondary attack rate are equally related to it because this R0 says this is the average number of secondary cases per case in a totally susceptible population that is the R0 or basic case reproduction number and the secondary attack rate is the proportion of those which are exposed to the primary case that develop the disease as a result of the exposure in a particular situation. Better way why, how we can define this thing is like this r not is the sum of the secondary attack rate in each situation by multiplied by number of contacts in those situations so this is the basic case reproduction number basic case reproduction number is the sum of secondary attack rate in each situation this situation might be household might be other family members might be the community and many things in anywhere it might be in the schools that we might be in the colleges that is the a basic case reproduction number this is secondary attack rate in each situation and when multiplied by the number of contact in that situation that gives the basic case reproduction number and then only we can decide when where in which way we are heading towards whether it is when the equal to cases where it is still increasing presently it is greater than one that's why we are saying that it is not in a position to say that we have controlled it fully there's no chance of it in the next six months or one year take it until the vaccination comes there's a very less chance of controlling it so that is the major fact now what is the severity many speakers already have said now how the severe conditions arise it can be only said by the case fatality rate it is a measure of cases who die from the conditions which indicates the severity of the conditions so case fatality rate only can define the severity of the manifestations it is the who die from these conditions, like if a breath, shortness of breath appears, if certain uh, 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 the fluid accumulation have been there in the lungs, specifically in the lower respiratory tract. In those cases, if the person surviving after ventilator use, if the person died, and if they died, which indicates the severity of the condition. And it can be given by this formula only that the number of cause specific death among the cases number of particular cause specific death among the cases when it is divided by the number of case of disease that has been caused the case fatality rate of this particular person of a particular area for mars it in the global rate is 37 percent for sars it is 10 percent for covid 19 around two percent globally it has been in a global rate 
and we have taken from the cdc data sets for global it is 2% is the severe conditions but we have to protect this thing now if you take area wise in india what actually happen is that uh, certain states are even bigger than certain countries in the world so in those cases this covid 19 the severity rate might increase also suppose in our west bengal or only what we have find out that it is severity rate are around 10 of 4.5 to 5% is the severity rate because it's west bengal is a bigger state and more than bigger is that maharashtra is there then uttar pradesh is there their severity rate might goes arise but around global rate it is 2% even proper care have been not been taken so it is the measure of cases who die from that condition which indicates the severity of the condition then the number of cause specific death among the cases if you divide it by the number of cases of disease that has says that <coughs> how much severe is the condition and cdc also says that for covid 19 the severity is about 2% so what we have said that we have to choose nothing but we have to protect ourselves from the corona virus until there is a vaccination and basic case reproduction number in the next one or two months it might rise but there is a not matter of this is no matter of afterness because we have to take care of ourselves only by avoiding close contact which showing the respiratory symptom wearing mask when going outside cover our mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing or respiratory etiquette should be maintained wash our hands regularly we have certain procedures how to wash our hands dr nayak has already been discuss all those things and we have to cook food or healthy foods we have to take up so that is the only thing until then are not basic reproduction right and that you have to make it at first all in equal to one or we have to come to that threshold level then only we can think of there less than one so until then we have to take care of it there is a nothing that it can cause severity we can survive if it is that the theory joseph borrell one of the high representative of european union said by the time it ends our world look very different obviously we are now feeling it we have to go through this alternative procedures and it had already been reshape our world so this is my short presentation regarding how much severe the infectious this virus is it all depends on the r not or basic reproduction number and how much the secondary cases arises from it both are related to each other the these are the references from the cdc who and london school of hygiene and tropical medicines from there we have given this all data are from uh, any queries you can forward it to my email that is db_meet@yahoo.co.in and if you have any that's my presentation once again thank you to giving me this opportunity for this thank presentation thank you sir thank you welcome sir uh, uh, for this uh, wonderful presentation so uh, before we again uh, i think we are running on time so okay, uh, uh, before we move on to the next session next speaker so we have a uh, questions uh, that i ask our participants to write down in the comment box of facebook and youtube so uh, one uh, speaker uh, named arnab chakravarti he has asked that a study found that at the early phase of the worldwide lockdown india's infection rate was much lower than the global rates but at yeah. the later phase of the lockdown the global infection rate has come down significantly as compared to india so why has it uh, happened uh, because they have implemented their population is not like our uh, india they have, we have a large population and we have a big country and uh, they have controlled like uh in from the beginning of it they have controlled it and they <clears throat> have prep strict protective measures they have been taken immediately we have done it uh if you take it for just from nepal point of view i am staying in nepal i given an example of nepal nepal have only one international airport and they have blocked two three days before india have done it so that is the thing they have implemented the strict measures also and in compared to india and have a big population they have certain have every 5 kilometers their language changes their people have certain affinities they have walk and now we are saying that laborers are coming up from a different states so that automatically the cases some will rise but does how much it is severe how much we are in a position to protect it that is one of the thing we have to take care of uh thank you sir uh, uh, another questions uh, put by uh, navajit mondol can 
all the edges are affected equally by the virus if not then uh, why is it uh, all the edges are presented as says uh, all the edges are affected equally because we are saying that if the comorbid conditions are there it might be severe yes all the edges are affected but compared to it in children in neonates it is very less because the they are uh, uh, after the born of a newborn they have been given the breast milk they have been little bit immunity has been more and they have been not been given taken to the outside that's why they are little bit protected but it is not like that nobody is immune to it but uh, anyone can get infection but if the comorbidity is there it will be affected to everyone uh, so uh, so uh, it's a good question i think uh, and another question the last uh, questions uh, we shall take that is uh, put by uh, participant that uh, in India, there is a rumor that uh, uh, in June uh, 30th, after th or 30th June, yeah, the, all the educational institutions will uh, uh, reopen. So what will happen then? How uh, should we uh, take, uh, what kind of precaution we should take at that time? That is the major thing. First of all, in schools, children, if you are going at, it is not like they are adults. Once they go in school, they, obviously in our part of the world, they will mix. Uh, we have also grown up in that situation. We know actually what happened in these schools. When Once it has been open, everybody will mix with each other. But how that has been maintaining it, that's why I've given the example of France. France have already opened the schools. But after two weeks, when the secondary cases have been rise, they have immediately stopped it. So that we have to take care of with proper discussions only we have to take care of either we have to make a sterilized or disinfection uh, tunnel through that tunnel we have to pass those children and only they can go through it and then a proper distance we have to make it in two shifts, two or three shifts we have to maintain it, two or three shifts we, we have to walk through it and then only we can uh, in the schools or even in the colleges and there are protective measures we have to taken without it we cannot open it sorry to say might be the administrators uh, doing it uh, so we have to open it open it for economy purpose it's okay but for exposing such a big population uh, it is at present it might be at risk at present might be at risk okay sir thank you uh, okay, thank sir. you sir uh, once again that you have uh, come to uh, address our participants out of your busy schedule uh, and we know and we so all admit that uh, you are the, uh, the the doctors uh, who are working at the front line, and uh, now you are the gods to uh, human beings uh, who are saving the lives. So thanks uh, a lot, sir. Uh, 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 so uh, thank you, sir, once again. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, uh, now uh, uh, we have the next uh, speaker, and uh, the last speaker of today's uh, session, uh, Doctor uh, Mohua Choudhury. Uh, she is uh, in the Department of Community Medicine, uh, Medinapur Medical College, Medinapur. Uh, she will talk on the COVID-19 community health. So I welcome you, ma'am, to this uh, international webinar uh, that the NSS Institute of Medinapur College uh, are organizing. Uh, all, all come to this uh, international webinar. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, since the since uh, we are on the webinar and I don't have a uh, I don't have a good internet connection. Uh, it may be disrupting sometimes. So for that, uh, I'm very, I regret for this. And soon I'll be starting with the presentation. Hope you all are able to see my slides. No. So first, I uh, hope you are able to see my slides. No, no. Okay. No, ma'am. No, no, no. I have to share it's it, not, right? Uh, it, it's not visible, right? Still no. 
So okay, uh, you uh, share screen. You share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Share Now is it visible? Is it visible? No ma'am. It's not visible. Uh, 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 you can see uh, the option share screen there. Uh, yes, I have, I have, window, I have uh, done that. I have done uh, that, but it's after, not uh, after clicking on that, uh, uh, you will be asked to share your window, uh, your entire screen or the uh, Chrome. Okay, so okay, you okay. Just okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now it's visible. Now, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, there is some connection problem always here. Okay. Uh, okay, now it is visible? Yeah, it's now visible. So, uh, shall I start? Yeah. Yes. So, we are starting with the community health. I am Dr. Mova Chaudhary, uh, Department of Community Medicine, Gunnapur Medical College. So, let's expose the virus. How we expose the virus? Through correct information and behaviors is the way to defeat the infection. And now let's play the game to uncover the virus and tackle it through correct information. I'll be giving you some information we should go through. Now in this session, what we are going to learn is a mode of transmission, information to the community in this section, information and knowledge regarding hand washing, cuff hygiene, social distancing and high risk group is provided. In community surveillance, in this section, we will discuss the contact tracing protocol, how to identify contact, etc. We'll also talk about stigma and discrimination and then supportive public health services. What is the role of the community? Health play in addressing COVID-19 in the community. And lastly, personal safety. So now, modes of transmission. As earlier, the speakers have already uh, told and uh, nicely explained the mode of transmission. I will not go into detail uh, through this pictorial uh, presentation. I want to just say that this in, uh, through the sneeze and cough of the infected persons, the infected droplets, they spread into the hands of the droplets of the infected person. And when they touch or touch you or any surface or a person who is not infected, the virus gets transferred to the a non-infected person through the infected person and the similar way sneezing and coughing by the infected persons when they touch the articles or the doors or the their mobiles anything any article that is uh, present nearby him or her that gets transmitted to that surface through their hands and then when we touch that surface the virus gets transmitted is at as easy as it is okay and now prevention safe practices in the community what we have to do in the community we have to practice some safe things to prevent the disease so what are the safe practices first is hand hygiene then is the social distancing we have to maintain high risk groups and respiratory hygiene i will go into details of it now for hand hygiene what is hand hygiene Hand hygiene is a way of cleaning one's hand that substantially reduces potential pathogens, harmful germs on the hand. The hand hygiene procedures include hand, hy hand washing with soap and water for at least 40 seconds. Or okay. Yeah.
हेलो हेलो फायरस मैडम so uh, uh, there is a network problem uh, i guess so there is a network problem i guess uh we're trying to uh, reach dr choudhury so uh, uh, uh we get for the inconvenience cause uh, actually uh, we are facing a network problem that's why dr choudhury is not able to uh, uh, join us uh, so uh, request you to uh, wait for a minute yes it's a network problem we are uh, facing problem to connect uh, to choudhury ek minute are connect korche yeah. connect korche connect korche ek minute okay connect korche so uh, i think it's a good topic uh, uh, for a discussion uh, community health we all are worried about community spread uh, of uh, this corona disease so uh, it's a good topic i think uh, she will speak on that uh, she is speaking on that uh, we can have questions at the end of this session uh dr choudhury has uh, joined uh, trying to join
uh, I know uh, we're facing a problem, a tough problem, as it's a good topic uh, to be discussed. So uh, we can wait uh, for Dr. Choudhury. Uh, she is trying to be connected with us. Yes, uh, good afternoon. You will, uh, yes, uh, no voice, that, uh, that means uh, uh, she will be audible once uh, she is connected. Once she gets connected, uh, You'll be able to listen to her. Dr. Choudhury is uh, 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 live now. Uh, as I said, there is a uh, connectivity problem. Uh, our network is uh, uh, going slow, so that's why. So, ma'am, uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. You can yeah, you, you can start again. Uh, your PPD is now visible. Okay. Shall I start from the beginning? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Uh, uh, what is that? Mm. Hello. So you, you can start uh, where you stopped. Uh, you can start from the uh, portion where you stopped. Okay. I will start with the supporting public health services, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Supportive public health services. What supportive public health services a community household must do? Uh, to support the uh, community household. So first is home quarantine or self quarantine, home quarantine of the family members and uh, home care. The next slide is about these. Home quarantine. What is home quarantine? To stay safe for probable infected person, restricted movement for COVID-19 suspect, keep distance, stay in well-ventilated specific room and away from other people in your home. Restrict movement, if available, use a separate bathroom. Avoid visitors in the house because if infected, you can spread infections to others. Seek health care and notify. If suffering from cough or fever or breathing difficulty and suspecting contact, we are a mask and notify nearest health facility, ASHA, ANN immediately. Avoid going to public areas. Do not go to work, school or public areas like markets, cinemas, etc. Avoid using public transport. We are a mask. We are a mask correctly when you are around and other people when you enter a uh, public place. <laughs> Home care, keep environment safe. Precautions to be taken by household where there is a suspect, where there is a suspected case. Support, assign family members to take care of infected persons, helping them to follow doctor's instruction for medication and care. Wash hands with soap and water for at least 40 seconds, or if soap and water are not available, clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 70% alcohol. Wash often and specifically after touching. Clean and dis disinfect. All high touch surfaces such as laptops, doorknobs, bathroom fixers, toilets, phones every day. Also wipe any surfaces that may have blood, stool or body fluids on them. Use bleaching powder solution, mm -hmm. one tablespoon of household bleach in four cups of water. Wash laundry thoroughly and avoid shaking solid linen. Immediately remove and wash clothes or bleeding that have blood, stool or body fluids on them. Keep away from body. 
wash and dis disinfect linen in warm water and soap dry in sun washing machine use disinfect soap warm water dry in then sun linen can be soaked in hot water and soap in a large drum using a stick to steer avoid splashing soak linen in 1% chlorine for approximately 30 minutes finally rinse with clean water and let linen dry fully in the sunlight place all the used disposable gloves face masks and other contaminated items on a linen container before disposing of them with other household waste what is the note infected person may be an ambulatory or bedridden home quarantine stay safe for family members household members should stay in another room or to be separated from the patients as much as possible household members should use a separate bedroom and bathroom if available avoid sharing household items that is dishes drinking glasses cups eating utensils towels beddings or other items with other people at home wash hands often thoroughly with soap and water for 40 seconds or with 70% alcohol based hand sanitizer when in contact with the person who is quarantined the family member should wear a three layered mask at all the times disposable masks are never to be reused use masks should be considered as potentially infected dispose masks by soaking in home bleach solution and then throwing in a dustbin do not let small children play with the used mask stigma and discrimination this is a very important slide because we are gradually as the pandemic is increasing the cases are increasing we are developing stigmas and the people who are coming uh, cured cured from the hospitals the people uh, around the uh, around the infected person uh, say they discriminate them very badly when they come to home so uh, here we must know what is stigma why there is stigma and why does stigma what does stigma do so what is stigma in any epidemic it is common for individuals to feel stressed and worried because they because they fear falling ill and dying avoiding approaching health facilities due to fear of becoming infected while in care fear of losing livelihoods not being able to work during isolation and of being dismissed from work fear of being socially excluded placed in quarantine because of being isolated uh, associated with the disease feeling powerless in protecting loved ones and feeling of losing loved ones because of the virus or being separated during quarantine Again, she might be facing a network problem, uh, as we uh, said earlier. Uh, after Ampan uh, hit West Bengal, uh, we all are facing a network problem. It's a fluctuating, always. Be it uh, Airtel, be it uh, Jio, uh, be it Vodafone, uh, uh, talk of. Uh, so uh pathadas uh, should we conclude uh, the session here yes uh, those who are asking for feedback form so as i have uh, stated uh, you can check your mail it has been clearly mentioned there that we will send you the feedback form at the end of the seminar you will get it at the end of the seminar we will mail you so only registered uh, participant they will receive the mail and they will be able to uh, send their feedback 
then after scrutiny after verification we will dispatch a uh, e certificate to your registered mail hello so ha hello uh, uh, we just uh, one minute or one minute another uh, just uh, he, will, he will she will not come uh, 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 we can finish the today's program okay tanmay tanmay kundu ha ah, yeah. uh, you will uh, uh, finish finish the program today's program so uh, uh, before we uh, wind up to the session i uh, want to uh, uh, like to thank you all of you uh, thank all of you uh, for your patience uh, for keep for giving time uh, almost 3 uh, hours uh, we are having this session started at uh, 10:30 it's now uh, 11 uh, it's now 1:30 so almost 3 hours uh, we are here on facebook and youtube uh, so you can uh, access to this webinar later also if you go through the facebook page of lss vidyapur college and uh, the youtube page channel of department of english vidyapur college you can access to this seminar uh, at uh, at your convenient time later uh, you can have uh, you can uh, listen to the lectures uh, del uh, delivered by our resource persons so uh, thank you once again uh, uh, to all of you uh, and tomorrow uh, uh, we have uh, as resource persons uh, who will speak on Uh, like uh, we have a speaker like uh, dr onjiman mohapatra uh, assistant director and publisher american chemical society from usa so i will request you uh, request all of you don't miss uh, the lecture as because he is currently working on the vaccine for covid 19 so he will be speaking from usa and his topic is prospects for a vaccine for covid 19 it's a interesting topic and we would gain uh, a different knowledge from his uh, speech so i request you all to attend the lecture tomorrow and if you have questions you can put your uh, questions in the comment box tomorrow uh, again we have a speaker uh, dr indol manna from mindapur medical college uh, dr alok kumar seal uh, department of macrobiology university of calcutta uh, devjani mitra dr devjani mitra is an assistant professor department of economics vijay kino gulf college uh, and the interesting topic uh, on which uh, she will uh, try to deal with and next uh, we have dr mr ognimil ognimil das so uh, he will speak on the role of uh, 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 volunteers the nss volunteers and the youth during pandemic and the last uh, uh, we have dr pratip tarabda uh, he will speak on the common guidelines to be followed uh, during the activity that nss volunteers or the workers or the ngo workers they are doing right now so what guidelines they are to be followed so he will speak on that so uh, once again i thank you all uh, so here why we uh, conclude the uh, today's session thank you thank you all